Hey guys, what's up? Time for part four, in which we will hopefully finish um, most of this patch. So, uh, yeah, between, in the last part, we got our sound going, we got our envelope going, now we're picking out note offs, and we're triggering, we're making sound, and we're mostly happy. Um, let's see, between then and now, I just went ahead and uh, cleaned up this part of the patch a little bit. It was starting, it was sort of starting to look like, um, you know, sort of starting to look like David Lynch had written this patch. Um, so it was a good idea to clean it up. All right, so now we need to filter our sound. If we want to get the characteristic, um, not really TB303 sound, we're going to have to do some filtering. Uh, and the filter on the TB303 is a four-pole low-pass filter. So what is a four-pole low-pass filter? I don't know. But if you take two um, two-pole low-pass filters and put them in series, that's probably four-pole, right? So let's do that. Um, First, let's go ahead and grab all this and crunch it down, Control shift e and we'll just call that Trigger, because uh, that handles triggering our notes on and off. Uh, okay, now we have to put in some filters. So I'm going to go ahead and filter um, before envelope. <laughs> I don't think it matters, and therefore it probably matters a great deal. Uh, so let's just pretend like it doesn't. And what we're going to use is um, Max MSP's built-in two-pole filter, BiQuad. Um, BiQuad is a super awesome, useful, filtering, all-purpose uh, object. It's really great. Learn to use it. Uh, we're going to make two of them and put them in series and feed the sound into that. And to control BiQuad, BiQuad takes a whole bunch of filter parameter arguments here. Um, feed forward coefficients, feedback coefficients, um, if you understood filter theory, which I don't, this would all make sense to you. Fortunately, there's an object called filter coef. Filter coef. And filter co... Oh, I misspelled it. I thought, I thought that maybe my whole life was a lie. Anyway, filter coef um, abstracts that away from you and lets you specify just your cutoff frequency, your gain, and uh, your resonance, and comes up with the filter parameters for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook these up. Um, to the two biquad objects. One, this is something that they really need to improve in Max. There has to be a way to handle connecting up a whole bunch of patch cables like this. Whatever. I'll write another angry letter. Uh, okay, cool. So those are all hooked up now. Um, another thing that's easy to forget uh, is filter coef can handle any kind of filter. Well, most kinds of filters. Um, low pass, high pass, all pass, band pass, all that stuff. So you have to send it a message to tell it what kind of filter it should be. Uh, in this case, we're going to make want it to be low pass. Connect here. No. Connect here. And then I'm going to add a load bang um, to bang it right when it loads. God. All right. Um, cool. So that's all hooked up. Should be good. Um, we're never going to make the gain anything other than one, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a signal object uh, with an argument one and feed that into the filter coef here. Um, yeah, and then that can all just come right out. Uh, and if we take all this junk, the filters, uh, hold on, let's make a couple uh, number tilde objects to control our filter parameters and feed those into the resonance and frequency. And now we can take all this junk. Control shift e that mother and call it filter. And just like that, man, we got filtering. So now if we play our sequence, um, let's go ahead and set the resonance to like 2 or something. Cutoff frequency to 5. Oops, 2, cutoff frequency to 500. Oh, and I have to go back in here and hit this load bang again. Um, and now we should be good. Let's see what happens. And we can sweep the frequency too. That's kind of the, like I said before, it's kind of the characteristic acid sound. You get a little loop going, and you tweak knobs around, and you look for uh, attractive girls on ecstasy in the audience. So I think we're getting there. Um, one of the last things that I think we want to do is part of the sound of this particular instrument comes from the fact that there's the uh, envelope can affect the filter parameters. Uh, so let's do exactly that. I, I don't know exactly how uh, these things get added together, but one thing that I find works pretty well is if you just take the envelope here, um, multiply it by a small, relatively small number, 
and remember to hook it back up to this thing too. Um, multiply by a, it by a relatively small number, and this number here that you're multiplying the envelope by is your uh, envelope modulation. This is how much the envelope will affect the filter parameters. Uh, so you multiply it by, it by a relatively small number, and then you take this that's being fed into our filter here, and multiply it by that number coming out of the ADSR uh, plus one. So what that means is that um, when the envelope is high, when you're in the attack phase, um, this is going to, uh, what the number that comes out of here is going to be greater than one, and so the cutoff frequency is going to be increased. Um, let's go ahead and add a floating number box here so we can change the filter cutoff. I'm sorry, the envelope modulation. And for now, let's just make it uh, zero. And I'm going to do uh, hook this same thing up for the resonance of the filter. So both the resonance of the filter and the cutoff frequency are going to be subject to amplitude uh, envelope modulation. So here's what it sounds like with no envelope modulation. Here's what it sounds like with, I don't know, four for envelope modulation. Because the envelope right at the beginning is increasing the cutoff frequency and the resonance. So that's, you get that, um, uh, it's a very characteristic sound, it's very important to this instrument. Okay, so let's see, we've got our envelope, we've got our filter, our sound, we can pick between saw and square, um, we can set the filter cutoff and the resonance. Uh, the last thing that we want to be able to do is detect accented notes. And for the purpose of this thing, I just decided that we're, we're going to decide together that um, any MIDI note with a, a velocity above 64 is accented and under 64 is not accented. So we'll just take the um, MIDI note that comes out here, um, use a cell zero object, a cell zero object, um, which we're ironically using to select everything other than zero, because that means that zero is going to come out this outlet, but um, everything else will come out here. And we're going to add a, a split object, give it the arguments 1 and 64. And this means that anything between 1 and 64 will come out here, anything greater than 64 will come out here, or less than, which is why we had to filter for zero. Um, and now here we're determining how much more an accented note is accented than a non-accented note. And I'm just going to go with a ratio of 3 to 4. Uh, <laughs> 3 to 4. And we'll multiply the output of our envelope by that. Multiply the output of the envelope by this number and that's it. That's it. I think that's literally everything. Let's make sure it works. Predictably, it does not work. <laughs> okay, so what happened? Uh, I bet it's this. I bet you can't do that. I bet you have to do it like this. Oh, I forgot to hook the envelope back up to the uh, output here. Sweet. Okay, so that's amazing. I think we've basically finished. Let's clean this up a little bit, and then um, after this, uh, I'll make one more tutorial and show you how to put it all into Ableton Live uh, so we can mess with it. Uh, so let's see, here's our envelope. Uh, we want to hold on to this because this is going to be um, this is going to be our envelope modulation um, 40, so that that varies continuously. Um, let's see, I'm adding these, I like to uh, control whatever parameters here with line objects, um, as many as I can that way, because that way you guarantee not to get any zipper noise. Um, we can talk about what that is another time. For now, I, I don't know, I don't feel like it. Uh, so let's see, basically all of this, let's duplicate this. Okay, okay, okay. And all of this now. 
let's see all this 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 and this is all related to envelope modulation oh my god Um, so it looks like what's going into that, <laughs> I mean, Christ, sometimes encapsulation can completely ruin your day. Um, this is definitely one of those times. Uh, so this is, jeez, uh, okay. I'm just going to grab all this and encapsulate it as well. And this is just, uh, is it accented? Is accented. Okay. And these guys are over here. And these ended up all out of order, which is kind of annoying. Let's see if we can't sort that. You can actually, when you encapsulate something, if you don't like the order that the inlets are in, you can actually just drag them around um, inside the uh, patcher and they'll adjust dynamically, which is really cool. Uh, it's like unexpected how, that, that it's able to do that. It's really, really great. Um, cool. Yeah, I like that. I like it that way. So now it looks like this is our cutoff frequency, this is our gain, I'm sorry, our resonance. Um, here's our envelope modulation. Here's the ADSR, so our envelope feeding into this envelope mod generator, or rather the part of our um, patch that handles envelope mod. Um, it gives these the parameters down here to the filter. The sound from the filter comes out here and gets multiplied by the envelope. And all that goes up into our output sound. And that, my friends, is it. We've done it. And amazingly, that's relatively clean. If you factor in the fa handle, if you take into account the fact that I'm zoomed way, way in, this is actually a very small and um, relatively elegant patch. So, <laughs> if I do say so myself, uh, that doesn't work, evidently. It's probably because. Um, oh, because these things aren't set. So. 500, um, I should probably add load messages for these, whatever. This should be one, and this is zero for now. Let's see if this works. a whole bunch of time talking about how great we are but that's it it's pretty much done yeah one more time where I'll show you how to put it to Ableton and um, that's basically it so yeah send me lots of comments and messages about how terrible this is and how people like me who think they know what they're doing should go die in a fire um, thanks for watching hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys later not really